Enter the enigmatic world of one of the most mysterious individuals in history, Fyodor Mihailovich Dostoevsky. A restless and vibrant soul during his childhood, Dostoevsky's inner world shattered when he discovered the lifeless body of his nine-year-old playmate. He withdrew into himself, unleashing a profound introspection that would forever shape his extraordinary literary works. Dostoevsky's heroes tend towards their own personality. Dostoevsky was influenced by masochism and guilt. Dostoevsky was sadistic towards others in trivial things and towards himself in important things. In other words, he was nothing but a masochist. When we first meet the characters in Dostoevsky's works, they may appear to us as unemployed weaklings whose thoughts are meaningless, who like to daydream. But the flame of their gaze is directed not outward but inward towards their own lives. Dostoevsky's most striking trait was his ability to conduct deep and detailed socio-psychological observations. He explored the complexities of human nature and unveiled the depths of the human mind through his characters. His influence on 19th century literature left a deep and universal impact. In terms of Dostoevsky's artistry, he is right next to Shakespeare. No novel can compete with the Brothers Karamazov. We cannot praise the Grand Inquisitor enough, one of the most competent examples of world literature. It is Dostoevsky's great mastery that he never fully explains his characters. They always surprise us with what they say and what they do, and they keep the eternal secret of existence with themselves until the end. Born to a father who was a military surgeon and a mother from a merchant family, Dostoevsky's life journey was marked by personal losses and financial difficulties. The tragic death of his father, killed by his own serfs, left him with meager financial resources. After graduating from the military engineering school, Dostoevsky discovered a profound interest in literature, reading, and immersing himself in the works of renowned authors. His first novel, Poor Folk, brought him acclaim, and he began to gain recognition in literary circles. After the fame he achieved with his first novel, he failed to be impressive with his personal appearance in the literary circles and society halls that showed great interest to him. With his short stature, ash small eyes, lips twitching from nervousness, and clumsy behavior, he evoked the impression of a sick person. There is no softening in Dostoevsky, as there is in Rembrandt or Beethoven. His works are like charcoal drawings made by looking at a Rembrandt painting with deep meaning. The literary world began to mock him, and in response, Dostoevsky decided to join the reformers. He did not hesitate to get involved in the impact of the political and social reform movement under the oppressive rule of Tsar Nicholas I. Concerned about the spread of revolutionary ideas from the West, the Tsarist regime ordered the arrest of members of the Petrushevsky group, including Dostoevsky. Following a lengthy investigation, a decision was made for 21 individuals, including Dostoevsky, to be executed by firing squad. The terrifying moments he experienced during the preparations for the execution left indelible marks in his memory. Dostoevsky described that moment as follows. The three men to be shot were tied to separate poles and blindfolded. Meanwhile, the privates loaded their rifles and shouldered them. After a cry of fire, three bodies collapse. They are replaced by three others, and just as the order to fire is expected, one of the adjutants waves a handkerchief they are spared. At times he was drowning in spiritual concussions. According to her own words, she was caught for the first time in this period by the Sarah watch, which did not leave her side for many years. He began to read frequently the New Testament, the only book allowed to be put in prison. It is said that under normal circumstances the various reactions arising in childhood under the influence of the Oedipus complex disappear over time. But as Dostoevsky's father's character became more and more severe as time passed, 
Their communication reached a dead end and Dostoevsky wished his father dead. This is why his repressed desires turned into epileptic seizures. He understands and comprehends the concepts of crime and punishment most deeply in exile. During his time as a rowing prisoner, his arms were stamped, his head was shaved, and he breaks stones. He begins to see the prisoners with whom he lives in poor working conditions as extraordinary people and discovers their richness of heart and shares their sorrow and pain. Dostoevsky, as an artist, is not only in harmony with himself, he deals with people of problematic temperament, and such people are the protagonists of his works. The people he creates have an immeasurable love for life to the extent that they suffer. In 1854, after being released from prison, Dostoevsky began his military service in the town of Semipolotinsk in Siberia. While serving in the army, Dostoevsky fell in love with the wife of a fellow officer. After the officer's death, he married the widowed woman, but the marriage did not bring happiness. The responsibilities and financial burden from this marriage further intensified his desire to return to literature after a long period of silence. To support his family's expenses, he made a decision to increase his income by gambling again, but he faced losses once more. He set out to complete crime and punishment, which he had been planning since prison days. The years he spends in prison allow him to get rid of his intellectual arrogance, which leads him to violate the moral laws and gradually get closer to ordinary and unfortunate people. He learns that happiness can be achieved not through a us-based understanding of life, but through suffering. The German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche also stated that Dostoevsky had a value beyond his literary identity. Dostoevsky is the only person who has taught me anything about psychology. However, Nietzsche's understanding of God and Dostoevsky's understanding of God are different. While Nietzsche interpreted God with the words, God is dead, Dostoevsky followed a different path from Nietzsche by saying, even if I know that life without God would be a lie, I still prefer to stay with God. According to Dostoevsky, the mystery of the universe is within man himself, and by solving the problem of man, the problem of God will be solved. In the brothers Karamazov, Ivan, who sets out from a rebellion and ends up in a metaphysical revolt against the world created by God, deals with the cursed questions that lead Dostoevsky to the search for faith. The answer to this fundamental question is given by the sermon of the monk Zosima, who states that the mystery of universal harmony can be accessed not by the intellect, but by the heart, emotion, and faith. Dostoevsky, who wanted to embody this principle of Zosima with a series of novels in which Alyosha would be the protagonist, fell into bed with a pulmonary hemorrhage age and died in Petersburg on January 28, 1881, before he had the opportunity to start this work. Approximately 30,000 people walked behind Dostoevsky's coffin at the funeral ceremony held on January 31st. If you want more such content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave a like.